Larry King now, one of Hollywood's biggest stars, Kate Beckinsale. In the very beginning when I first did Underworld, it was really because I had done so many literary adaptations or period movies or, or whatever that I think it was becoming difficult for me to you know be taken seriously for meetings where there was a bit of edge required or you know they were like well she's very English and she's kind of delicate and frail and all that so if a woman is earning um, you know a good deal of money if, if she's earning you know the most on the set that can create its own problems I think that there is still a kind of psychological block um, that probably needs still a few years to be ironed out about certain people's resistance to that. What's your take on our election? Um, it's, I find it all quite terrifying. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was a joke at first, but it turns out it's not. Plus, secret talent. Um, uh, fake sneezing. What? I'm really good at pretending to sneeze. Um, Show me. Okay, hold on. That's all next on Larry King Now. Larry King, now our special guest, Kate Beckinsale, the acclaimed actress known for her diverse film and television career. Kate, of course, has starred in films like Pearl Harbor, Serendipity, the Underworld franchise, and Van Helsing. And now she's back on the big screen in Love and Friendship, a terrific comedy, an adaptation of Jane Austen's Lady Susan. Love and Friendship is out now. Why did they change the title? Um, because it didn't have a title at first. The novella was untitled and unfinished and... Jane Austen's book was unfinished? Yeah, she wrote it, I think, at the, around the age of 20 and didn't publish it, just sort of put it in a drawer. And then, 40 or 50 years after she died, her nephew decided to publish it and he gave it the title Lady Susan, but I think our director felt because Jane Austen hadn't picked the title, he had some liberty in choosing a different one. It's very funny. She didn't write comedy, did she? But apparently so, yeah, because most of our movie is directly from her novella. and she. How, I, I loved it. How did they get you. you to do it? Um, well, I had worked with Wit 18 years ago on oh. Last Days of Disco. Oh, Wit. Wit Stillman, yeah, the director of the movie. And uh, he, had, he had cast me as quite a naughty, tricky girl in this movie we did called Last Days of Disco, and I guess um, he thought of me again, so that was very nice. But did you want to do a movie where you have a grown daughter? Uh, why not? I have got a grown daughter. How old is your daughter? Seventeen. Really? <laughs> yes, it was a surprise to me at the time. <laughs> so. <laughs> so you gave birth at what, thirteen? Yes, exactly, that's what we say, nine and a half. That's what we do in England. Did you have fun doing it? This movie or yeah. having the baby? Well, both. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yes, I did have fun doing it. It was a very short schedule. So um, we shot the movie in 26 days, which is a very wordy, verbose movie. And did you work um, 20 hours a day? Yeah, we did work quite a lot of hours a day. And also, we were shooting in Ireland, in Dublin, so there wasn't unlimited light. And the director quite likes to change your dialogue up a bit, which was quite challenging for me because I had a lot of it. You know. What's special about Wit Stillman? almost everything is special about Whit Stillman. He's a completely kind of unique, um, very socially observant, incredibly intellectual, smart, very um, sort of European sensibility American, um, who seems kind of rather buttoned up, has actually got this kind of deranged sense of humor at the same time. I, I love him, I think he's wonderful. He wrote Metropolitan, right? Yes, in yeah. Barcelona, yeah. You live here now, right? I do, yeah. You like yeah. it? I do, I really like it. I've got very, very, very spoiled by the weather. I didn't know that um, you weren't supposed to feel kind of mopey and tired all the time, and that's just when there's it no sunlight. Do it to you. Yeah, and I thought that was just what being a person was. You moved between this character. What did you find in her? Why did you like Susan? I mean, I'm, I'm always drawn to those characters that aren't really likable, but you sort of like despite yourself. I, I really love those those characters, and they, and they don't come around that often. But she's very, very bright and very articulate and charming, but she's also incredibly self-serving and ruthless and rather brutal. And I, I love the kind of challenge of, of balancing all of those things, you know, into one person. Are you comfortable with comedy? I love comedy. I mean, in fact, I think I gave it a little bit of a wide berth initially because my father was a very, very, very well-known and beloved comedy actor in England who died very young and very tragically. So his um, his TV shows are really the staples of 70s British comedy and they're constantly really? repeated. What's his name? His name's Richard Beckinsale. They, none of them came 
here. So it's a complete institution in England, and he's very, very, very much associated with comedy in England. I think when I very first started, I, I thought, oh, I don't want to be having the same last name and in the same patch. But actually, I'm very into comedy because I was raised on, you know, incredibly high quality comedy. Was he funny comedy. at home? Yeah, he was funny at home. He was shy, actually, but he was really funny at home. So you had the right genes. I guess so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you move between characters like Lady Susan and uh, Celine in the Underworld series. Do you like action films? Um, I do. I have to say... Most act a lot of actors told me they do them for the money. Right. Well, that also helps. I mean, it <laughs> definitely helps. But it wasn't so much that. In the very beginning, when I first did Underworld, it was really because I had done so many literary adaptations or period movies or, or whatever that I think it was becoming difficult for me to you know be taken seriously for meetings where there was a bit of edge required or you know they were like well she's very English and she's kind of delicate and frail and all that and I didn't feel like that person so um, when Underworld One came along I sort of jumped at the chance to even see for myself if I could do something that was a little bit more you know more edgy and tough and then that kind of really got away from me <laughs> then people started thinking I was you know prone to machine gunning people in my day. You like physical? Um, you like doing stuff like shooting people? I mean, I don't, I wouldn't like to really shoot someone, <laughs> but um, I've, I've got really, really huge hands and I'm rotten at playing the piano. They are enormous. Um, so I found finally... They look, they're very nice. Thank you very much, but they are unfeasibly large. So <laughs> the fact that I'm not very good at basketball or playing the piano, I, find, I did find that gun handling was the... the, the How material. many underworlds have there been? There have been five, and I've been in four. Is there well. another one coming? That's the fifth one, yeah. Yeah. They, I did it wow. already, yeah. Is there a genre you prefer? I mean, I think I'm most at home with, um, you know, drama and comedy. I, 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 I still feel a little bit like a fraud in the action department because I didn't grow up doing karate every day and I had really no aptitude for PE at all. So that was something that was really an experiment. and. You know, I love the fact that I'm one of those women that, you know, there's not many of us that get to kind of to do this stuff and for it to work. But at the same time, it does feel kind of a weird thing to, for that to be the thing that's most associated with you. It's actually the, probably the biggest stretch. What do you look for in a script? Um, I mean, obviously, I, I, you know, really great writing, but I, ideally a really interesting, you know, complex character. And also, it's a director's medium. I mean, I think that one of the most terribly important things is who's directing the movie. Are you annoyed by pay inequality? Am I annoyed by it? Yeah, sure, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, obviously, we've come a very long way from the world of love and friendship, where... You're you the know, star of love and friendship. I am the star of love and friendship. So you're the highest paid employee in that film. I mean, I don't know. I, oh, I would sure. assume you are. You would be ticked if you weren't. I wouldn't even know. To be honest, for that movie, it was not really an issue about that. I mean, I don't think anybody was doing that for a paycheck. I think but there we were is so pay delighted. inequality. There is definitely pay inequality, yeah, for sure. And even when there isn't, I mean, I think the other thing that can happen as well is if a woman is earning, um, you know, a good deal of money. I've heard this from a lot of people. If, if she's earning, you know, the most on the set, that can create its own problems. I think that there is Does still, maybe, I think there's still a kind of psychological block um, that probably needs still a few years to be ironed out about certain people's resistance to that. Next, we'll look back at Kate's magnificent career and maybe get into a little politics too. Who knows? Stay with us. Our guest is Kate Beckinsale, a terrific, beautiful, talented actress. She stars in Love and Friendship, based on Jane Austen's Lady Susan, which Jane did not finish, right? Right. So you finished so we did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you miss about London? Oh, a lot of things. My mum, number one, my stepfather, my family, my oldest friends, you know, my best friends are from um, middle school and, and that sort of thing. Um, do you I, go back often? I do. I've been able to go back quite a bit in the last couple of years, which has been nice. I miss black cabs. Um, I don't have a driver's license and I have a very bad sense of direction. So in England, the taxis have had to learn where everything is and it's like a really serious skill. So you can just sort of fling yourself in a taxi and say, help, help, and give them the name of a place and they, and they, have to, they know where it is. Yeah, it's amazing. Do you Uber here? Um, I do. I don't have a lot of luck with Uber. I've got some kind of repelling thing about electronics. So if I call an Uber, it probably won't come. But if I have someone else call it for me, then it, it will. Does your daughter like going to England? She does. And she has, you know, she's lived here since she was four or five, and somehow I've managed to brainwash her into having my exact accent. So Is she, she interested in the arts? Yeah, she's, um, she's 
thinking about becoming an actress, actually. Does she have an accent? She has my accent. She does? Yeah. Um, I, think, I think I brainwashed her and hypnotized her at night reading her the whole of Harry Potter. Um, <laughs> somehow managed to make that stick. What do you make of all the changes, the technologies? and the, the, what we're living in nowadays, social media, reality TV, <laughs> 500 channels, and televisions as big as movie making. And I mean, I'm like that little old lady. I still am sad about the fact they got rid of vinyl, you know. I, I, Me too. I, I, I'm, it's one I of those... I miss typewriters. Uh, yes, yeah, same. I have, I have a hard time kind of letting go of things. And I have so, a flip phone. I have a flip phone. I had a flip phone until about six months ago, and the only reason I ended up getting an iPhone was because my very best friend's mother was really seriously unwell, and we had to text so much, and she was getting huge phone bills. But, yeah, but when you get an iPhone, you get addicted. Yes, I, I know. Well, this is addicted. the trouble, and, and it does happen. Same thing with reality TV. I'm fine as long as I don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> What's your take on our election? Um, it's, I find it all quite terrifying. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was a joke at first, but it turns out it's not. What do your friends in Britain think of uh, Mr. Trump and the gang? I mean, I think, it's, I think it's quite hard for them to believe. I mean, I think we all thought it was a sort of a joke, you know, that, that's got really out of hand. The new mayor of London scary. called Mr. Trump stance on Islam ignorant. I'd say that's probably accurate. You feel the same way? I would think so, yeah. Do you know the new mayor? Personally not. <laughs> Do you get involved in politics? Um, probably less than I would had my stepfather not been insanely political growing up. He was, um, he was a Trotskyist and um, I was raised in, um, you know, a very, very political environment and I think... What party was he in? The Workers' Revolutionary Party. The Liberals. Yeah, well, yeah, Trotskyist. He was a left winger. Oh, very much, yeah. So, um, you know, I very much respect him and, you know, was aware that my um, understanding of everything was so, you know, I was nine when that all started. So um, I, it's not necessarily been my uh, PhD, but um, I... <laughs> Did he die young? He didn't. My actual father died at 31 years old. My stepfather's still alive. 31? Yeah. Yeah, he had a, a heart attack, a huge heart attack one day. And he was a leading comic figure? Yeah, he was actually an incredibly talented actor and straight actor, but what he was at that point in his career very, very known for was, was comedy. So that must have been a tragedy in Britain. It was huge, yeah. And in fact, it was 1979 when he died. And I know, was John Lennon 1980? Yeah. Yeah. And the, the feeling in the streets where we lived was very similar. So in my mind, as a child, I've had the two... Conf events confused because that you know there was a lot of how old were you five so I've always felt a slight ownership of John Lennon because of that actually you have memories of your father I do but I mean I was five also and the other thing was because his shows were repeated constantly so from you've seen on, him. he's been a very current figure my whole life which is kind of weird now that I'm vastly older than he is your mother remarried she did yeah and you like your stepfather very, very much I've got lucky. I've got lucky with fathers, but, you know, I've got unlucky in some respects and lucky in others. Well, we all have our little... Yeah. Problem. Life is not easy, is it? No. No, but it's still worth having, isn't it? Do you like being a mother? Yes. And you're asking me at a time when I could easily say no, because I, you know, teenage years are supposed to be the time you try and give them back. No. Teenagers are different. Is your daughter into her iPhone? She is, but she's not... She's not really obsessive. I've got, I'm very lucky. She's, she's very, very bright and funny and quirky and has a great sense of humor. And um, she's a really good student. You know, I'm, I'm sort of trying to get her to stop doing her homework and hang out with me. And, you know, I, I've got champagne problems in the child department. <laughs> <laughs> After the break, I'll ask Kate about the newest Underworld film. And we'll play a little game of If You Only Knew. And she stars in Love and Friendship. Don't click away. Back with Kate Beckinsale. She stars in uh, Love and Friendship, the adaptation of Jane Austen's Lady Susan. Very funny, very well done, and done in quick time, too. Yes, very efficient. Okay, the fifth installment of Underworld will come out this year. What can you tell us about it? Well, um, Underworld it, Blood Wars. Yes, Blood Wars, yes. We've got quite a few new characters, new villains, new. Whole you kill worlds. people in it? Not people. I mean, you know, creatures. Creatures. Yeah, I don't kill people. Are they fun to do? 
They are fun to do. I mean, it's a weird thing to play the same character that, that many times. You know, I think in order to, um, you know, make it worthwhile, they have to kind of really dream up a lot of different stuff to happen. But um, I do. I find I get more nervous about um, uh, the whole action side of it the more I go because I think people's expectation of me is, you know, each movie that goes by, I'm supposed to be, you know, Bruce Lee even more each time. <laughs> and so, um, so that actually, I've got I've got more nervous about it rather. Where than do that. they shoot? Um, we've shot in Budapest, we've shot in Prague, we've shot in Canada, um, so... Do you like hopping around a lot? Um, I do and I don't. I mean, I like being in other countries. I've, I've always had a big struggle about, you know, I'm very, very close to my daughter and I've very often been a single parent and so when she was younger and portable I would take her with me um, and then it got kind of, you know, a little bit more difficult, so I'm glad they invented now, Sky. This new Underworld was directed by Anna Forster, mm -hmm. a woman. A woman. We don't associate women with doing action movies. <sighs> no. Right? I mean, I haven't had that experience. I mean, she's up, might, the first woman I've, I've had direct me in action. What was it like? Fantastic. You know, she was, she's, I didn't notice any difference, really. I mean, the, she was great. A director's a director. Absolutely. Would you like to direct? Um, my stepfather's a director, and I grew up uh, watching him and thinking, oh, I really don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm writing actually at the moment, so um, an, uh, another writer and I are writing a screenplay together, and so I'm really enjoying that. So I'm not screenplay not about into it. Um, it's sort of a, it's, a, it's a kind of quite a dark comedy about uh, actually a mother and a daughter, funnily enough. Aha. Aha. A little biographical. My, it's actually not, but um, she's rotten this woman. How do you explain Underworld's fan base? How do I explain it? I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's a, it's a movie that probably wouldn't get off the ground if it was starting today because um, I think we were one of the last movies that really squeaked in that wasn't based on a video game or a comic book or a remake or something like that. So it's actually very hard to imagine. But pre-Underworld, I guess what made them go for it was somebody walked into a room and said, I've got a novel idea. How about we put vampires and werewolves in the same movie? And, you know, obviously now vampires and werewolves are in every single movie and every single everything. But you were the first. That, I think we were. I'm the grandma of those, of those maybe even grandma of Twilight. <laughs> okay, we're going to play a little game of If You Only Knew. I'll throw some things at you and we just quick. Okay. It. Secret talent. Um, uh, fake sneezing. What? I'm really good at pretending to sneeze. Um, Show me. Okay, wait, wait, hold on. It's good, isn't it? That was great, and you didn't sneeze. No. Do it again. That's phenomenal. I know. If I did it 22 times in a row, I'd get sent out of science class, and then I'd go and hang out with my friends. Have you done it in a film? Um, I'm not sure I have. Underused. You had some film will have to... Sneeze. Should, really, shouldn't it? Get a sneezer. Get a sneezer. <laughs> Guilty pleasure. Mm. Um, some um, celebrity Big Brother UK. First job. What was your first job? It was um, it was a TV show. I didn't have any real jobs. You were um, in a TV show. I was in. I had a small part in a TV movie. That was your first paycheck. That was my first paycheck. Actually, my first paycheck, I was 18 months old and I was playing a baby in a, a, something that my mother was in and she was really uncomfortable because they wanted me to cry and I happened to be in a very good mood that day so they kept pinching me. Your mother was an actress too? My mother's an actress, yeah. So is she still acting? She's, I think, had enough of it now, but she probably, yeah, she probably did. Do you do any impersonations? Not usually in front of people, mainly of my mother, just to be mean. Last time you were starstruck? Um... Last time I was starstruck. The thing that's really tricky is, if you've got a child and they're starstruck or in, really into somebody, you become like a lunatic around if you happen to see that person. So my daughter's obsessed with Hamilton, the show Hamilton at the moment. I um, It's amazing and we've been to see it twice and we both sat there sobbing and whatever. Anyway, I was doing some publicity in New York and I happened to walk past a room and that wonderful actor who played Lafayette was in the room and before I knew what I'd done, I'd sort of rushed in and basically sort of licked him on the face. And it, I mean, it, it was not, I wouldn't normally do that because, <laughs> because my daughter's so mad about it. Um, I had a kind of strange freedom to Did behave. Did you understand? all the lyrics? Did you keep up with it? I've seen it twice and also don't forget I've got special help from a teenager because also I'm from England I didn't even had never heard of Hamilton ever in my whole life and it was really I'm not that great on American history because they don't really teach it in England. Your former king is in it. He is and doing a very good job. He's funny. Very funny. Oh. What do Americans get wrong about the UK? 
What do they get wrong? I think they, I think they say that all our teeth are horrible, and I don't think that's true. Yours aren't. Mine are all right. What do the British get wrong about Americans? Um, that they're terribly uninhibited. I think they're not so much. If you weren't an actor, what would you be? I'd quite like to be a, a doctor. A doctor? Yeah. Tell me something people don't know about you. What do people not know about me? Um, I'm, uh, well, there's a few things probably that they shouldn't know. Um, oh, come on. <laughs> what do they not know about me? I speak Russian. You speak Russian? Yeah. Where'd you learn that? Oxford. You went to Oxford? Didn't know that either. There we go, too far. You graduated Oxford? I went for three years out of four and didn't go back, yeah. Is that school equal to its reputation? Yeah, very much so. Why I, did you major in Russian? Why did you take Russian? I did Russian and French. Um, because I really liked those subjects and I was really into, at one point I was, I, I, I wanted to read Chekhov and, you know, Moliere and all that in the Is original it a language. difficult language? Very. And actually, the further you go with it, it gets harder, which is really unfair because the further you go with French, it actually gets easier. But Russian's, Russian's hard. The grammar's mm. quite hard. Uh, Favourite project you ever worked on? That's a really hard one. I mean, I really did love this one. I really did love Last Days of Disco. I loved doing The Aviator. That was an amazing experience. Um, did you regret a role you turned down? <laughs> yes, but I never would say. I'm far too polite to say which. Oh, to turn down? Yeah. No, I regret roles I've played. I don't, haven't really regretted anything you I've done. You regret roles you've played? <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> yeah? I mean, a couple. Is there a movie you were in you would say, don't release it? Oh, I'm sure, yeah. And then, unfortunately, there's also some movies that didn't quite get released that I was really proud of, so <laughs> I guess it weighs out. In our final moments, Kate will take your questions. The movie Love and Friendship. She's the star. We'll be right back. We'll be back with Kate Beckinsale. She stars in Love and Friendship. It's out now. We have social media questions for you. Okay. Derek Paris on Facebook. Are you an absolutely fabulous fan, and are you looking forward to the new movie? I am a huge fan, yeah, and I'm really, really excited about the movie. He also asked, would you consider a TV series here in America? Sure. Has he written one? No. Yeah, no. Would yeah. you like to write one together? OK, go on, Where then. can we meet? What do you, let's not do, like, a coffee bean. That's, a coffee let's bean? Not do, let's do something more interesting. Not to do a disservice to the coffee okay. bean. We'll figure it out. OK. Kerry Hopper on the Larry King Now blog. Kate, how did you come up with the name Lily for your daughter? Well, I wasn't planning on calling her Lily at all. And in fact, we had planned on calling her a completely different name. And then What when name she, had you planned? We had planned on calling her Ruby. Ruby? Yeah. And um, then when she was born, she just didn't look like a Ruby at all. And so for the first four or five days, we just called her the baby. And then I felt in that fanciful way you do when you've just had a baby, I felt like the baby told me her name was Lily. Um, she looked like a flower. She did. She was just beautiful and kind of open and. Wide. She looked like her mother. She does actually, yeah. But now she tells me she hates her name. So evidently she didn't tell me anything of the sort. And I was They go through that when yes. they hate their name. I think it was maybe the epidural. My daughter, when she was ten, used another name for a year. Did she? Her name is Kaya, which I love. Very nice name. She wanted to be called Lee. Well, I mean that's also quite a good name. So I had to call her Lee. Did you? And then it went away. And then one day I called and said, holy, and she said, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, Valerie on Twitter, in your opinion, besides the UK and the United States, what country offers the best cinema? Gosh, that's really tricky. I mean, in terms of my experience, which is, I must say, limited, that's all we're um, I, I fell madly in love with French movies. Um, so. At Sherry Magic on Twitter, do you have any favorite musicians or bands you can't stop listening to? Um, I'm very old school. Like, I'll, I'm going through, um, you know, obviously I've, I think everyone this year has been going through a David Bowie sort of resurgence, and I was always a big Bowie fan, um, you know, growing up as well. But um, I kind of pop around. I've got lots of different favorites. Um, What's your current? Say. What's my current? It's never current. I like the kinks at the moment. Uh, Imaginary World B on Twitter, what are your thoughts on having Lana Del Rey perform a song on the soundtrack of the new Underworld? I mean, I'd be very open to it. Why, is she, is she available? I don't know. I don't know where it's coming from. I mean, why not? And Matt Ottstadt on Twitter, what do you make of Hollywood's glut of remakes and reboots? I mean, I've been in a couple myself, you know, I think... Sometimes I think it's not a bad idea, um, especially if there's a movie that's suddenly kind of dated or um, wasn't 
perfect to begin with, but but there are certain movies that you just think, I, I don't know why you, you should really touch. That was a moment that should sort of stay a moment. Last but not least, True Cali Boy wants to know on Twitter, this is a key question. Uh -oh. What's your favorite kind of pizza? Pizza? Pizza, you know, that's the round thing? Yes, I remember, I vaguely remember that from vaguely the 80s. Remember. They have places, they sell <laughs> Yeah. Um, I think just regular Yeah, cheese. me too. Yeah. Cheese? Yeah, just regular cheese tomato. pizza. I don't mind little bits of green stuff on it. Uh, what's your next movie? My next movie coming out is probably Underworld. Underworld, I know, but yeah. after that. I, I'm writing one at the moment, that's what I'm doing. That's the one you're doing? You're writing? Yeah. I'm with writing. someone else? Yeah. A man or a woman? A woman. Two women writing about a movie about a woman with a daughter. You're going to be first in the queue, aren't you? A single parent? Actually, yes. Is it a comedy? Of sorts, yes. Quite dark. Do you have it cast in your mind? I mean, the, the one of the parts, yes. Yours? <laughs> yes, but not yet. <laughs> is there a male lead? There is. Do you have an actor in mind? No, not yet. How old must the actor be? Um, probably. <laughs> you like an older man. <laughs> an older, kind of suave Jewish guy. In suspenders. In suspenders. How weird, yeah. How weird. <laughs> you are a delight. Oh, thank you. It's been so much Great fun. Scene. Thank you Love for having me. Thank you very much. Big thanks to my guest, Kate Beckinsale. Be sure to see her in Love and Friendship. It's in theaters now, and as always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>